I've sunk an enemy destroyer. In a deep blue with a crew so true. USS Scary Sails cut ways new. Through the mist with a silent hiss. Talk is on. Hey team, this is Ripper here because you're doing fantastic today. You got a fun doubleheader video here. Um, just talking about just basic destroyer gameplay and how they win games, as you can see in the title of the video, and really just demonstrating the power of what a good destroyer player can really do to an enemy team, uh, especially when you just know what you're doing. And uh, it really has nothing to do with which ship you pick. It's about the strategy, play style, and really, honestly, I think the destroyer gameplay is the key pivotal role of any game. So before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the supporters of the channel. If you like what we're doing here and you see value in it, hit that like button, leave a comment. As always, let us know how we're doing, what we can do better. And uh, it's just building a great community and uh, making this place better, that it's friendly it's in, and it's welcoming. Everybody's welcome here. Uh, there's really just a, a warm uh, community that I want to really foster and create to talk about tactics, strategy, and just having a blast and making new friends and having a blast doing it. So let's get right to it. Uh, first video we're going to show today is the gearing. One of my favorite destroyers when I first uh, got the game, it really was... The one I really wanted to have, it just looks cool. The guns on the 127 millimeter Mark, oh man, what kind of guns are these again? I always forget the number, Mark, Mark something. Mark 8, Mark 12, yeah, you guys correct me. I'm not very good on the, the numbering of it. I'm a, an Air Force guy, so I don't really know all the, the numbering mechanics of the guns itself. I'm more of a different uh, tactician strategist. But uh, the guns are awesome. They're 127 millimeter guns, the basics of any uh, kind of a battleship cruiser line or secondaries or destroyer line of the American uh, U.S. fleet. It was really awesome. They're powerful. And of course, the bread and butter of the gearing is the stealth capability with torpedoes. I mean, these things pack a wallop. Now, watch what I'm doing right here. Right off the bat, you check out, hey, who are you going up against? Oh, I got a small lens. Very bad. And look, I launched preemptive torpedoes because kind of why. And we'll talk about, I'll pause the video and take a look at some of the aspects of destroyer gameplay of why I think they're so powerful, what you can learn. And what I've learned along the years of playing this game for, a, a, man, almost like four to five years now, and, and uh, how we actually uh, utilize our ship to maximize the effectiveness and to mitigate any kind of damage to ourselves as well. Notice that the gearing torpedoes go out to 16.5. So I'm literally, if I fire, these things will go all the way out to this line you see over here. So what am I doing? I'm literally anticipating. Notice that this thing is ticking down, which means that 28 seconds, they're going to cap this uh, alpha point, which means that he's probably hiding right behind here. So I'm just going to launch preemptive torpedoes that way and then head around this island to intercept to the west to flank and spot. So let's take a look. I'll speed and then I'll speed up some of the boring uh, aspects of it <laughs> just to get this thing going, game going. But really, the cool thing I like about the torpedoes is they're not so undetectably like stealthy like they still have a 7.5 reaction time 69 knots if you build for it and they, they do pack a wallop gearing torpedoes are pretty darn proud Ooh, we might have a small lens here that actually is running and here's the other aspect of you also have they have the summers which is kind of the another counterpart um to the american line destroyer uh really you got to be careful there torpedo as well Ooh, and i take a massive hit unnecessary damage that was my fault right there but hey he did the same thing he anticipated where my movements are whoa look at that first blood devastating strike Smolensk goes down, eliminating one of the most feared toxic ships in the game is a very, very wonderful feeling to have. And notice that the bulk of the enemy forces over here as well as we are, but we just eliminated one of their heavy hitters right off the map. And that's really what you want to do is as a torpedo and a gunboat destroyer, you want to literally eliminate a lot of the biggest threats uh, right off the bat, obviously, in any kind of engagement, but also to deter any kind of um, ship movement. It really sometimes is not about destroying ships, but just deterring them so that they don't want to push in and go, oh, my gosh, there's a torpedo destroyer over here. We do not want to press into this uh, that quickly. We want to actually think about what we're going to do. Uh, before we just sacrifice or throw away our ship. And that fear alone really can push an enemy flank just to, to crumbles and to shambles. Right there, we have the RPF locating the Summers. That's why I've always said RPF is an incredible tool to have because it gives you situational awareness that you would not have if you didn't arm it because it, it's always running 24-7. So it's a great tool to have rather than these other gimmicks where they only activate if certain things happen. No, I want to have situational awareness 24-7. Why not? It gives you the ability to make decisions that could 
d definitely impact the game in the long run because, you know, steering your ship, you may not think that's a big thing, but actually it takes a while to position and maneuver your ship around this map because they're not like fighter jets they're not airplanes like cvs are you can't just reposition all across the map just out of a a, a, a a split of a second you really have to take time and take your uh, actions and think about them methodically to know that hey this may take a while i need to position my ships for uh the course of the duration of the battle because one small course correction and over time and i've always taught this in my uh training uh, when i teach you guys about uh course corrections flying long distances gps flying everything that if you're off by one degree over a long course of time you could literally be off by oh and there's another hit with a you know, torpedo right there summer oh man this thing is so powerful gearing but by going back to my thoughts, if you are off by one degree and over a long, like fly one degree off course for about five, four to five hours, and you will be way off the target by miles, okay? So it may be that small course correction of a difference that literally makes the impact of the battle of the in, in the course of the game. So right there, you could see that small correction by the summers if you didn't move out of the torpedoes way you would have been alive but hey we just took that preemptive shot i knew hey somebody's in the back of us just launch a bunch of torpedoes in that general direction and then we start moving to the south and we start farming the wisconsin and here's the power of not only the torpedoes but the guns of the gearing are powerful as well they start a lot of fires notice i'm shooting at the back of the ship to start that fourth fire he's already got three fires going we talked about this before start fires and battleships that's what you're supposed to do and we've eliminated literally uh, ha majority of the bulk of their team now. All that's left is the Vampire 2 and the Mecklenburg. We've got both caps now. Pretty much is just mopping up on aisle 14 here and uh, and taking the rest of the players out. And then you know, here's where the gearing shines. The guns are nothing to gawk at. It's got also in the center plate 19 or 21 millimeter armor plating, which a lot of these um, HE shells do shatter from these small caliber uh, destroyers like the Vampire and the Daring. They will shatter on your uh, 21 millimeter center plate armor plating. So they got to shoot AP, and that's what he's doing, and you got to angle them. Ooh, now, are we going to get this kill? We're going to fire into the smoke, and boom, the guns are nothing to gawk at right there. Splash 3, impact of the game right there, gearing. And here we're shooting some uh, torpedoes to the Beckenberg. Let them clean up on aisle 69, and they are going to kill everybody on the map. We're going to nose into the profile, slim toothpick profile here. This is our only defense against this point. We're just going to wait until we go in undetectable. Oh, and he gets one shot right on our bow, and we go down. But not after we take out three players of the team. You know, we do significant damage, taking out their Summers, taking out the Vampire, taking out the Smolensk right off of that. And you could see the power of what one little destroyer can do for your enemy flank and literally mops up everybody on aisle 69 right there. And here we go. Let's take out the Mecklenburg and you can see the impact of the game. Yeah, he's probably going to go down right here. Yeah, we'll just speed it up and just show you the end results. Yep, he's pretty much, it's pretty much over. He's going to burn to that. Boom, he goes down. Conquer goes down. Let's see how we did. Ooh, look at that. Uh, 92,000 damage. We get two devastating strikes. Incredible. What does that mean? A period of five seconds using an armament and deal damage at least 50% of the HP. Pretty darn awesome. Three kills right there. And number one on the team, of course. And here we go. Man, ninth. Uh, majority of the damage was from uh, the torpedoes. Man, that I'm telling you, the gearing is something super powerful. But man, with the, the uh, torpedoes, very, very impactful right there. Let's take a look at another game that uh, we're going to show off the Lucians here. And uh, let's take a look at how powerful a gunboat destroyer is. All right, here's another game with the Lucians right here. Pretty darn fun and awesome. I mean, this is another powerful destroyer that I definitely wish uh, people could get. It was a dockyard event. Unfortunately, I just uh, have no other way to tell you how to get it other than if you did the dockyard event. I wish they would bring them back, but some of these ships are super freaking powerful that they do release kind of like the FOMO and situation and pretty... Uh, sad that they're not available anymore, but man, do I recommend. Again, RPF locating where the enemy is. Again, as always, a good destroyer player looks at the lineup. Going against any another Lucian, that will be our biggest threat right there. We can melt the Garion, we can melt Shima. Minotaur, if he has radar, that's another problem. And of course, battleships, we're going to punch them in the face as fast as we can. So let's get right to it. So how are we going to do this? Execute this. We're going to go into Alpha Cab. But this time, uh, most people usually like to go to the back side of Alpha and hide behind the silent. No, no, no. I don't like to do that. I'm going to punch the enemy right in the face right off the bat. Because I have situations awareness i know where this uh, rpf is going i know that some of their ships are slow it's probably going to be a one-on-one -on -one gun battle with the lucians again with the speed of lucians pretty quick 38 knots max right now if i basically hit straight in i can nose in profile and then my guns are 360 turrets which means my guns are always facing forward and no matter what left or right here we go engagement rpf i'm gonna head right toward the rpf so i'll my detection's great so here we go i'm gonna shoot ap only because someone told me online says just shoot ap even if you get over pins they're still going to do 800 to a, you know thousand damage sometimes so why not so take a look at this i'm getting over pins over pins but look at the damage it's causing 2100 
1,700, good pens, 1,400, getting over pens, still getting 2,300, and a boom, splash one first blood. And like I said, even I, he, my, the guy that I have to thank you, whoever was online that told me about, hey, even if you get over pens, it's still doing damage. Your HE on the Illusions is pretty darn weak, but like PP shooters, but with the AP, they do better damage. Even with overpins, you're still doing a percentage of good damage that really affects the enemy, and it's pretty awesome. And here's where this bread and butter of Illusions is, is the super heal. Look at what the heal is. It's literally healing almost majority of my shit back right there. That is, this thing is a zombie, okay? Once it takes damage, it literally, the, the tactic is hit and run, go undetect it, and go back and go to the corner and go heal yourself. <laughs> that literally is a zombie, the definition of a zombie ship. Pretty ridiculous. I mean, this Pan-Asian and the Soviet line, really powerful in that regard, like the Kabarovs, the Nutrishimi, the Lucian, the, this, the super heal that brings destroyers back to life is an incredible feat right here. And here we go, there's our counterpart Lucian right there. We're gonna try to get as much damage. Hey, hey, we're doing 1600, 900, look at that. That little damage right there alone, Ooh, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that, all that damage we're doing right there alone at range. And this is the power of the, what the Lucian can do with AP. Just even at range, we can do that much damage. And it really, that will hopefully make him just think twice about <laughs> pushing him down the center. He's running around. Hopefully that helps that little damage tick that we did right there off alone will help out our team uh, eliminate that Lucian's uh, down in the long run. So now let's go ahead and pick on the biggest guy in the game here, which is, I think, the Wisconsin, because Wisconsin is definitely powerful. It is a powerful battleship. Uh, I would say that from the Dockyard event, uh, that just happened. I and mean, if you didn't get it, I'm sorry you missed out on it. But man, it is a powerful battleship. And then, pr particularly, it is the healing, uh, the ability for it to use the F key, the funny button, to go, you know, get those heals back real quick, reduce the gun reload. Um, but the other thing is the, the accuracy of the guns. The Sigma, the dispersion on it are pretty, like, I would say like Stalingrad, Slava-like, where they, man, they are just Citadel monsters. And I didn't understand that until I started playing it and seeing a little bit more. Now, I thought the ship should have been a little bit more powerful, but. Uh, you know, with 81,000 HP, it's an Iowa class. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought it could uh, have a little bit more HP at tier 10 and maybe some, um, I don't know. The guns are great already. I mean, I th since the guns are already cool and they're accurate, uh, but I think it can use a little bit more health at tier 10. That's pretty much all I could really do for the ship. But man, with the hands of a good player, it is super freaking powerful. Now look what we're going to do to this thing. He's got 68,000 health, but watch how much how much health we got to do, do to the or damage of this ship. And there's one, their torpedo. He took a torpedo hit. Look at the survivability of this thing now. Now, I know he's fighting against a GK. You don't want to pick a fair fight with a battleship, okay? You want to have some kind of advantage somehow. You never pick a fair fight. Never, ever, ever pick a fair fight. If you're not cheating, you ain't trying. You have to literally figure out any kind of way to win an engagement uh, so that you it, it always ends up in your favor. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to start more fires. Now, he's he is focused on the other GK right now, which is great. you got to find these moments. That's the only reason why I elected to fire, because why I want to find a way to start as many fires while mitigating damage because I do not want him to shoot at me because they're super aggro guns. But this is a good thing that GK is picking a fight with him. And he, again, you let a destroyer run amok with you, I mean, you're, it's going to take you to, you know, to the, the grave. So let's see here. He's 30,000 health. You notice his health is going to start ticking back up in a minute with that funny button. He's going to activate it. He's going to get his health back. And let's see if we can start a fire on it. Look at the reload on the guns. The reloads on the Lucian is incredible. That's why I like about it. Now, notice it's only, tick, yeah, it's only doing 231 damage sometimes, but... These guns are PP shooters. Now he takes out the GK. Now we're going to take on the Wisconsin by ourselves now. He's got 16,000 health. Let's see if we can get some more fires going on him. And he's turning right here. Again, I'm aiming at the superstructure, trying to get a fire because that's where the easiest place to get a fire is, superstructure. And we're also taking off free damage right there if we hit the superstructure. But we're trying to get that fire going. Let's see, he's at 12,800. He fires at me. I'm going to take a massive hit. These guns are super accurate. There's nothing I can do to dodge these things because my, my ship doesn't maneuver that great. There's one fire right now. Let's see if we can get a second fire. See, I don't think he has fire prevention going on. Yep, he doesn't. The superstructure in the back is on fire. We're starting another fire central mass. We're going to throw a couple DP torpedoes there. And thank for the, the, thankfully, he was distracted long enough where we get this fire, get passive damage, and he's going to go down. And boom, we take out with this constant right there. Man, that was uh, a pretty ghost. And look at that, how much damage he did. 5,400 damage right there alone right there. So we're, that, that was significant right there by taking out the Wisconsin. Shimakaze on this flank helps out our team a great, great deal. So, I mean, just take a look at that video, analyze a little bit how you could do that attack and how you could do it better. But honestly, all I could do is shoot this superstructure, get those two fires going on in this uh, central portion of the ship. 
and uh, he didn't have fire prevention, so that was luckily for us. So we could get that one fire. Starting a fire on the bow and the stern are very difficult, but uh, not not impossible. But it just takes a little bit more hits, and you may not do that significant damage to the superstructure while shooting the bow and the stern. But now we're going to do the same thing to the GK. There's one fire. Lucian's is great for fire starting because the amount of DPM you're firing out there, it's very, very effective. And again, there's a second fire. He did not have fire prevention, which, mean, which means we can start two fires on him. He damaged Conch, which is a, a good thing for us because now he once we get another fire, it's going to stick. He's got a secondaries on us right now. Now, the cool thing about the Lucians, the AP is also powerful as well. I could definitely switch to AP right here and just melt this guy. But uh, I wanted to see if I could start one more fire as his damage con goes down. Let's see if we can get in. Oh, he's almost dead anyways. 5,000. Man, we are taking on the battleships like crazy today. And let's see if we can get one more. Can we get this hit? Can we get the kill? And he goes down to the GK. Way to go right there uh, from the other GK. Boopsie boo. And here we go. We're going to take on what's left here. We have a Gearing and a St. Vincent. St. Vincent's way of the north. We're not too worried. I think we can win this game literally by just melting. Now, watch this engagement from, uh, I think this is the Gearing right here. We're going to go one-on-one, -on -one, one -on -one, toe toe-to-toe. Now, the Gearing's going to be at full health, okay? We are 10,000 health. We save our heal for this moment because we are going to slow. Now, although we have a heal that can heal majority of our health back, we are going to save it so it begins ticking up as we begin the engagement. So, because it's so slow ticking up, it takes time to heal, right? We're going to heal slowly. So, as we take damage, it is slowly repairing itself and it's just basically nulling itself out, neutralizing it. So, let's take a look. I love the RPF. It tells me where the guy's at, right? Situational awareness. We get the first look, first kill. There we go. He fires first. We get our AP guns on. Look at that full health gearing. And we're just going to aim AP right into the center right there because why? He's got that 20 mil hour flaming. Hopefully it arms just enough for us to get that full damage right. But it doesn't matter if we get overpinned. We're still going to do more damage than the HE. Well, look at that. And we're healing ourselves slowly. He doesn't have a heal, so we have an advantage right here. Just look at that massive damage right there to the center of his ship right there. Boom, boom, boom. Great full pins right there getting that juicy hits and do we melt them right off the bat and boom there it is splash three and we survive with the heal with just 800 health left and that is how you win the game ladies and gentlemen right there so so freaking powerful the Lucians, and man this thing is a beast uh yeah i mean i'm telling you gearing is also powerful as well but unfortunately with the Lucians, the heal just saved us right there and it's all about that hey having that knowing the situational awareness first look first kill just having the guns ready to go ready to fire ready to aim and just being on your toes to engage we're going to cap this point and win the game for our team right there i mean it was so so powerful uh the destroyer gameplay role is incredible game that's why i like the destroyer gameplay because it's very pivotal very impactful you can make a difference to win the games for your team and like i said it is so uh, I mean, difficult to play a battleship these days with these powerful destroyers of 10, tier 10, and uh, especially with HE spamming cruisers and everything, CV, submarines. I mean, yeah, it, it, I think the destroyer gameplay role is way more enjoyable, way more fun for me, and, and I personally, because you can do so many things with it, and it's a versatile role. But anyway, so there is the battle. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. And as always, if you see me out there, say hi, and uh, I hope to, to hear from you guys soon. And you guys stay safe, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in the next clan battle season as well. Here it is, 125 damage, three kills, a lot of fires. Man, we are a savior of the game right here. Uh, Dreadnought surviving that much. First blood, and man, high caliber, as always. Man, powerful, powerful Lucians and gearing. And uh, again, as always, hope you guys are doing well, and we'll see you guys soon. Cheers.